from a double leg break. Garrity says he's now hoping to be back in time for the Listole Festival in September. Also in racing, Enable will face seven rivals in Saturday's Group 1 Carl Eclipse at Sandown. It'll be her first appearance on turf since landing the Breeders' Cup at Churchill Downs last November. And at home, this racing today from Tipperary and Bellustown. For OTB Sports Radio, I'm Tom Malone. OTB Sports Radio. Join Bruce Betting now for a risk-free first bet up to €100. Euro. That's right. New Irish accounts can enjoy a risk-free first bet up to €100. Euro. So if your first bet loses, we'll refund your stake with a free bet. Now that's giving you more. Bruce Betting. In store, online and now on your phone. T's and C's apply. Please gamble responsibly. See dunlouis.net. The Cadbury Flake McFlurry is here at McDonald's. So break out your short shorts because rain or shine, summer has officially begun. Soft dairy ice cream swirled with Cadbury Flake chocolate pieces and delicious chocolatey or raspberry sauce. Available until the 6th of August. I hear you some wire needs a fixin', ma'am. The name's Buzz. On account of my work. No chance. Not all cowboys ride horses. All safe electric registered electrical contractors must give you a certificate of completion that shows their work meets approved standards. Find one nearby on safeelectric.ie. The Hurling Show. From Off The Ball. Yes, hello and welcome to the Hurling Show here on Off The Ball. Uh, we're here live on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Send us in any comments, any questions, any queries uh, with hashtag the Hurling Show here to Off The Ball. Uh, I'm Shane Stapleton. With me this week in studio is Michael Verney of the Irish Independent and former Wicklow hurler, I've decided this week. <laughs> yeah, someone was on to me actually because Wicklow and Offaly are in the ring. He said, are you going to start describing yourself as a Wicklow hurler? Well, who are you going to play for? <laughs> is it, will there be a Great glorious question. comeback? Like, without being smart, it's mad to fall from grace because I, it would have been joked about a bit like that, you know, how far away Wicklow are from Offaly, but like, obviously, Clearly, they're not. They're not. You, you made the now. right decision. <laughs> the decision was made for me, to be <laughs> fair. Um, we have to t- look. We'll look. We'll uh, just quickly look over the results from the weekend. So, Wexford 123, Kilkenny 23 in the Leinster final. That was a fantastic win for Wexford. 15 year famine. Could you call that a famine? Oh, you could. You with could, the minor yeah. famine as well, 34 years as well. Like. Especially with the sort of Wexford's historical pedigree. You know, you'd have to say that is a bit of a famine for them. Uh, Limerick absolutely annihilated Tipperary, 226 to 214. Uh, Joe McDonough final, 326 to Leash, 121 for Westmead. So that's Leash up to the Leinster Championship next year, and they're against Dublin this coming weekend. Westmead, of course, will have to go and play, or will will be welcoming Cork this weekend as well. I'm going to start off with the goal of the week. It has to be. One man, and one man only, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I'll be straight. You say this every week. And it's Lee Moog McGovern. Yeah. It had to be Lee Moog McGovern. Uh, for unseen work, he was unbelievable. You'd have to be blind not to see what people, he was doing. A lot of people wouldn't have seen him. And wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been in the top two or three Wexford players for some people. Oh, they'd see Lee Chin's catch all right and think he had an unreal yeah, game. And he was good. Just scores and Conor McDonald's scores. Yeah, but Lee Chin, or sorry, Lee Moog McGovern. He'd love to have a He's, GPS on him. Yeah, and uh, he, that 70 shows hairstyle as well is unbelievable. <laughs> Good character, actually. Um, and he, like all the hardship he had as well. Like, oh, the two crucials. Yeah, like this is it's literally four days like that. That's why you go through all that. And mm. it's great to see him getting his just rewards and all the rest of them as well. Mm. Uh, he scored a point. He's created six scoring chances as well, five of which were taken as well. So the most, probably the that's most why important the point of the game as well because they were just after getting the goal and you're expecting a Kilkenny barrage and another score and then he puts over this great I think Matt Hanlon caught it carried it out McGovern carried then and put it over the bar it was super and I, I, I don't think they scored hardly anything after that after Liam McGovern's yeah, one I have it here let's very see very little if, if anything I'd say uh, they, to be honest with you they got one more point in the 65 point, yeah. from Chin but actually now that you mention it it was Kilkenny's lack of composure towards the end of the game that was it was ridiculous. I mean, they were, what, th- uh, two points down at one stage. Sorry, it was 122 to 23, yeah. Conor Fogarty solos in on the left wing under the Hogan stand and he tries to cut it across. Liam, Liam Ryan runs out with the ball. I mean, that would have brought it back to a point and that's 68 minutes. 78 minutes, Owen Murphy drops in a free from midfield. He can score from his own 45. Yeah. He then dropped a 65 in a minute later, then the 72nd minute from his own 45. And again, he has the range. He drops it in. And then uh, Paul Murphy drops in one late on for Chin to catch the, yeah. the catch that everyone knows. I was chatting one of the boys about this at Trent last night. It's a weird one. When, when somebody like tries to force a goal or just panics a small bit, 
it can just have a kind of a ripple effect in the lads around them. And like I don't think in a month of Sundays, Owen Murphy in any other game would have dropped that ball in. Mm. But just like someone else had kind of set the template almost. That's how they were good. They, were, they, they thought they needed a goal, and he panicked, and then another man panicked, and another man panicked. Mm. But like they would have gotten the draw if you add, if you add those scores up, they would have gotten a draw. It's mm. mad. We're going to talk to Kenny for another minute. We'll, we'll have Martin Story coming on the line as well, the 1996 All Ireland winning captain. Later on in the show, we're going to have Ollie Moore and former Limerick captain um, as well. But to talk about Kilkenny a little bit more, when I was looking at the the score and chances after the game, I totted them up. Kilkenny had 43 chances and Wexford had 32. So it was down to scoring efficiency, which is a huge thing for all GEA teams in both codes now. Kilkenny's scoring efficiency was 53%, 75% for Wexford. Yeah, it just it was one of those days. They, they didn't really miss. And some of them were some of them were pot shots. Like McDonald's shot at the very start was a really low percentage shot, an amazing score, really low percentage shot. I'd say and like he can be kind of hit and miss sometimes mm-hmm. in front of the goal. I'd say he only took four shots at the goal and scored. And O'Connor, I don't think O'Connor pay a wide. Funnily enough, actually, uh, I was in Tullamore last night, the under-20 game. Our, our lads were beaten, but a great performance. And I was in collecting the boys in the chipper after. And I went down anyway. And Rory O'Connor was actually at, at the counter order. And it's just, it's good to see, uh, it's good to see an inter-county player uh, enjoying himself after a win. They're obviously still enjoying it. And Davies down golfing as well, so they're enjoying the week. I presume all the Offaly lads, both senior and underage, were in there. Eating. There was no one in there. There was no one in there. Just a few of my friends. That was all. Yeah, so, like, the other thing that's out was the two sweepers Kevin Foley in the game constantly Park Walsh exceptional hurler not in the game at all so what it said to me is that Wexford they didn't really create any goal chances except for Rory O'Connor uh, winning the penalty whereas Kilkenny probably got in there a few times um, Colin Fenley had one chance they tried to pop in the ball to him a lot in full forward isolated on Liam Ryan and you know there was plenty of fouls given as in he won plenty of oh, fouls. He didn't get half enough, in so, my view, but go on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But what it said to me is that Wexford decided we're going to win the game from outside. So they weren't hitting in far enough for Park Walsh to get the ball on the D, really. And they were playing from outside and scoring from distance as well. The goal of the week was one of the main reasons for that. Yeah. Like he was, him, and, him and O'Keefe were carrying some amount of ball. Just the interesting thing on the puckouts as well, which I thought was really interesting. Like Wexford basically did not go short. Mm. Everything was a kind of a boomer ball, and it was almost like, and they got loads of bodies around the break. It was almost like, okay, we're not going to play short and play at the Park Walsh. Then we'll just go straight on top of them and have lots of bodies in there on the break. Yeah. Like, and it kind of eliminated any chance of the goal in Wexford Park was not going to happen again. I'd say they decided that mm. that it wasn't going to be a goalkeeping error or anything that was going to cause cause them that. And it just kind of it just negated Walsh. Like Walsh wasn't going to catch a booming puck out with like six or seven lads around him. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just thought it was kind of clever. They minimised the amount of mistakes that they were going to make, which was interesting. And as well, if you have everyone kind of in a tight little channel in the middle with the high ball going down on top of it and all the Wexford players know it, if it breaks left or right, there's actually a huge amount of space yeah. for you to pick up your own break. Uh, we're going to talk to Martin Story now. He's on the phone. How are you doing, my, uh, Martin? The Wexford going to be good this week after so long. You know, it would have to be good. Did you celebrate hard? I did. I was very. I struggled a lot on Monday. Now I didn't eat much at all Monday. I, I just wasn't really in the humour. I suppose or the body wasn't able. Maybe. <laughs> and like, what was your feeling on the game? Like, were you on the edge of your seat throughout? Were you confident? What were you thinking? Well, I mean, before I felt it was the first time in a long, long time that we had a very realistic chance of, of beating Kilkenny. I mean, I felt we were even the the, the dominance of that brilliant team, the best team of all time that Kilkenny had was starting to tail out. I mean, there's very, very few of them left, like, you know, and our lads growing up that are into their, we say, mid-twenties now would have been even enough with that Kilkenny team. They would have won three Leinster on the 21s and they would have won an Arabon and so they wouldn't have had the fear maybe of, of getting an, an unbelievable beating and Kilkenny hasn't that, done that to anybody in the last couple of years so I felt it was a, it was a, a very good chance and we got our tactics right now. We got our we got our tactics right on Sunday. I mean, we got intercepted. We got intercepted on sharp hookouts in Wexford Park. I think it ended with 1-4 coming from it. We went no sharp hookouts last Sunday. And, I mean, we made Parik Walsh into a hero the week before, and we, and we starved him a ball last Sunday. So, I mean, Davey got, the, Davey got his, his match-up right and his game plan right for them two things. So, we're crucial because Parik Walsh got man of the match in Wexford Park. Like, so, you know, them were two probably vital, vital things in it. And it was, it was at the end of the day, I wouldn't fancy playing Kilkenny again, like if you know what I mean. It's not a, there's no dominance in it. It was just a, a good win for us, like. 
I, it'd probably be fair to say that when, when we spoke last year, you probably weren't the greatest fan of how Davy was setting up the team tactically. Has he changed something that you're you're approving of how he's going about it now? He has. I mean, it, like we had no we 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 had no short poke out last Sunday. We went along with everything. We went back literally old style that the ball was coming out and it was going down nearly 50-50 and you were hoping the lads either to win it or get the breaks. And I mean, we pulled lads into the middle and we went down to the middle with a lot of our poke outs and, and it was being broke and we had lads coming on to it at speed like we had Rory O'Connor. I mean, if you go back to the Dublin match, Rory was played in the full forward lane and he was starved the ball. And last Sunday he was played played out, out to Rome and he got man of the match like, and, and that's the difference in, in letting players play to their potential as well I mean game plans are brilliant if they work and systems are brilliant if they work but if you've the best hurler in the country and you can't get a ball onto him well your system is, is failing him then rather than him failing the system isn't it? Yeah that's true um, I want to talk about the change in Wexford over the last number of years and I spoke with Owen Quigley I think it was about four years ago now and he was talking about how the players probably weren't properly fit up until Liam Dunn came in, your own club mate came in. And a couple of the quotes he gave me and said, there would be a question mark probably over the level of fitness that the whole panel was at. Lifestyle styles have changed, weight programs have changed, the fitness training has changed, and the body fat of those players is very low compared with uh, where they were three years ago. Usually an inter-county player, you're looking at sub-13% as an average of body fat. I don't know what it would have been in 2012, but I'd imagine it'd be more on the 16 or 17 scale. So that was Liam, and then obviously Liam had a couple of good years, and then maybe a tailed off a small bit, Davies come in and in year three he's after taking it on and winning a, a Leinster title with 10 of the same players that lost by 24 points to Wexford uh, just five years ago as well. Can you talk about that evolution of Wexford in the past couple of years? I, of course I can and it's simply down to the players are maturing and starting to come into their prime. I mean when you were going back with Liam Dunn most of them lads are only 19, 20 and you expect 20, you expect 20 year olds to lead the challenge. I mean, they usually used to play the support act and, and, the, and the mid to late 20s lads lead it. And if you go to Kilkenny, you go to Kilkenny now and look at their dominance and all of a sudden when all them great leaders are gone, they're, 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 they're not the power that they were. And that's just down to the players. And I think our lads, our lads, a lot of them have gone into their mid, mid-20s and all of a sudden they're totally coming into their prime. And I mean, going back, going back to not being fit, well, I, I would put the onus of that back to the inter-county player. It's not up to the management and it's not up to the it's not up to the second conditioning coach. It's up to the player to make sure that he is within he is within the, the, the reams of, of what he should be. Like I mean, that's your own personal responsibility. Even in my time. I mean I trained on my own because you wanted to be that little bit fitter and stuff and I mean it's very, very easy to blame other people when, when, when we fall short, if you know what I mean. And I'm I'm not one of those. I think we just we just we have been mature and getting there and the dominance of Kilkenny has come down. Galway would have with it. They'd stay at the top for another while. They didn't. And I mean, Limerick are the team that looks to be holding their level of performance from last year and probably increasing a bit after looking at bits of, of last Sunday's Munster final, like, you know? Martin, how far do you think Wexford can go from here? Like everybody said, progress for Davy was probably winning Leinster, getting to an All Ireland semi final. They're there now. Do you expect them to kick on now? Like, like can Wexford get to an All Ireland final? And in your opinion, are they realistic All Ireland contenders? Absolutely, absolutely, they are. I mean, I can only go back to when I was playing, and Mead beat us. Mead beat us in a league match in Belfield, and Liam Griffin got spat at the same day going off the field. And the following year, we won the All Ireland. I mean, of course, once you get a bit of momentum, players get belief in themselves and they just start pushing on and all of a sudden the, the momentum is so big that you play better. And I mean, that's what happened with these lads. After getting a bit of confidence for not, from not losing the match in the Leinster Round Robin series, like, they, they played with confidence last Sunday. You, you, you could see there was no panic. They stuck to their system and everyone worked absolutely unbelievably strong within, within their own job to do. And I mean, I can't, I can't see why. I think it's looking like we've been playing the winners of Leash, Dublin, Tipperary, isn't it? Yeah, right, yeah. Well, I mean, we say if it's Dublin, Tipperary, or Leash, I think we'd have a 50 50 chance with any of those. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I can't see why, can't, why we can't make an All Ireland final. You get to the All Ireland final, it's, a two, it's, it's just one or two teams left in the country, like, and, and I can't see why you can't go all the way. But that's not trying to blow it up and make it a big thing. I mean, Davies, my. my my interpretation of Davy's progress would be getting us to the last four, and I'd have to totally commend him on that. I mean, people thought I didn't like Davy. It's not that I didn't like Davy. I didn't like his game plan. But that's nothing to do with the person. I mean, he's a great motivator. He's 
passionate as could be about it, like, you know, and he brings everything to the game. But still, if he went back to the all sets, it might be given out tomorrow morning again, like. I know what you mean, I know what you mean. Just a quick one, Martin, uh, slightly off topic, but we were talking about conditioning and body fat and different things like that, and a little birdie told me that you don't, uh, that you don't eat fruit or vegetables, definitely not vegetables, and you believe there's a, an adequate substitute out there for vegetables if you don't like them. Well, I've never eaten vegetables. I mean, I mean, I reckon if you're wanting to get some some goodness out of out of carrots, you probably have to eat three or four kilograms. So, I mean, if you just take a if you just take a sort of vitamin C drink in the morning, it'll do the same job all day. Like, so you know, I mean, but look, that's not that's that's the, probably the wrong thing to say. I was just I was a very very finicky eater all my life. So, I mean, you know, you like what you like. I mean, but in, 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 if I get up in the morning, I would have. I would have three Weetabix with a bowl of granola on top of it, like, you know, so there's enough substance in that and, and you know, roughage and everything in that, that'll do you and it'll, you're able to replace stuff you don't like, you know, but you don't have to stick to this man mountain. I remember Liam Griffin used to put about a pound weight of spinach on our plate every day, even <laughs> when we were training and I used to look at it and I'd nearly vomit, like, but look at that, that was me, most of the other lads loved it. Uh, Martin, do you think there's any chance of, like, uh, the players not keeping their feet uh, on the ground after this win? I don't, I don't, I couldn't see it happening. I don't, I couldn't see Levy, Davy allowing it to happen. And I couldn't see the, the players letting it happen after being beaten and not winning a Leinster title or a National League title. The, the, the silverware that they've had was the Walsh Cup in, in, we said, I don't know, many years. So I don't think, I don't think they, sh- they will. I, I think they'll just stay with their heads down and they're so excited. Well, I found that we had won very, very little, right? And I found that when you got there, you were looking at this as the biggest opportunity of your life to, to get on the big stage again, because we hadn't been on the big stage. And I think they will look at that. They will look at that. And I, maybe you're so used to it now, but after being, after being in Waterford and after being with Clare and after winning the all Ireland, to know what to give the lads to, as regards media and everything. Like, you know what I mean? He'll have that lobby totally planned out. Yeah, and it wasn't by accident in that game on, that we're talking about Davy that Park Walsh didn't get on the ball, the most influential player. That would have been down to planning to some extent anyway. Well, it would just been down to ball use. I mean, look up. I mean, if you go back to the if you go back to the to the Kilkenny match in Wexford Park, we were under a lot more pressure than we were last Sunday. I mean, we we were under a lot more pressure and we were chasing probably a lot harder. And lads were clearing balls without maybe looking up first. They took the extra second second or two last Sunday to look up and try and find a Wexford man but if you go back to the if you go back to the league semi-final when Wexford played Tipperary in Nolan Park we had Sean Murphy playing playing sweeper for us and I mean Tipperary played two corner forwards that day with no full forward and Sean Murphy was taken nearly out of the game because he couldn't get from one side to the other as quick as the ball could mm. do you know what I mean you can, you can actually take a sweeper out of the game if you use the ball I mean Galway Galway did it the year they won the All Ireland. They, they they played high ball into their corner men that were good catchers and good fielders. So you didn't need to go down the middle to your sweeper. I mean, you know, Kilkenny often overrode a sweeper with just the, the ability of their forwards to win ball. Like you know what I mean? You don't have to. You don't have to make the sweeper look look good if you don't want to. Like you know. And Sean Murphy's your own club man there at Ulster to Bala. He like he was sweeper. Ultimately, um, Davy decided to have a change and put Kevin Foley back there. And like you would think to some people that might hurt their confidence, but Sean has actually gone and played very well in a different position. Often man marking, got a few points against Danny Sutcliffe, um, roaming out around the middle in the previous game. He was more defensive in this last game. I remember him getting a couple of blockdowns as well. So he, he, David's found a nice balance there, changing sweeper, but also keeping Sean Murphy involved. Yeah, but I mean, I, 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 just, felt that, I just felt it was holding Sean Murphy back to the sweeper because he's such a, he's such a good player. I mean, I thought he'd done an absolutely excellent job and a young Mullen on Sunday, like he he scored one four get one four against us in in Wexford Park. He got two threes as one six, and I think he let up he set up three points as one nine. That's twelve points. We held him a lot tighter than that with Sean doing a man marking job on him on him last Sunday. And Sean will be what Sean is the oldest player on the field. He he loved me saying that, but I mean, and he probably one of the most mature. So it's very easy to give an older player a job to do, and he'll stick to it. Wherever you have a young fellow with full of enthusiasm, and full of legs, and full of running. He wants to be on the ball, whereas an older player will have it. And he said, "The job is more important than myself." Like, can you do the job? Like, you know. And and I think it's shooting Sean, and he's getting a chance to get up the field on an overlap, and he's getting scores. Couple of questions in for you here, Martin uh, lads. Who will Martin pass his winning speech of '96 onto, <laughs> Lee or Matthew? <laughs> who will he give it? It'll be definitely Matthew. 
Right. If, if, if that if that ever ever happens, you can't talk about winning speeches unless you've won. Do you know what I mean? So, so to me, I don't know. I wouldn't think Lee would want it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Matt would be Matt would be the man for that if it ever if it ever comes to it. But look, I don't know things you can't talk about until directly in 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 in. They are doing it, like, you know. Mm, Matthew could do it in Spanish, too. He studied in Madrid there for, for exactly, a year. Exactly, yeah, you know, he has, uh, he's very, very good at communicating. He's very, very good with uh, the kids. He's very, very good at charity work and stuff. Like, you know, and I mean, so is Lee now, but Matthew is just, you know, he has that, he has that about him. He has that character about him, you know, and it's lovely to see it that they're so good with underage and children, you know. Mm, one other question coming in from Sean and Ennis Gorthy. How important is Rory O'Connor for Wexford? He's vital. He's vital because because he's a he's a free spirit in the way he plays. Do you know what I mean? And you can't you can't set a game plan to stop someone that hurls for instinct and he's probably our most instinctive hurler and you can't because you don't know if you're going to try to flick it over your leg over your head in between your legs, throw it out and go after it. You wouldn't know whether he'd he'd shoot from the sideline, he put it over the back. You know what I mean? You don't know what he's going to do next, so you can't mark that. And I mean, that's why that's why I was delighted that he was out in the half hour line come midfield where he could roam because he caused he, he caused ha, he caused havoc all day, like you know. One final question then before we let you go, Martin. Where to, where for Kilkenny after this? Kilkenny could be in an all Ireland fight. Don't ever 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 underestimate a right off Kilkenny. I mean, they don't. You know, that's the one thing at your peril that you would do. I mean. There was if you go back to the last five minutes, Kilkenny probably had four chances, and the game was won by a goal. They just maybe the decision making in the last four or five minutes could have been different, and and the result could have been different. So no, Kilkenny are Kilkenny are going to be in that shake up, and, and I'd have no I'd have no doubts in the world about that. Brilliant stuff, Martin. Thanks very much for joining us, and enjoy the celebrations. Oh, I know celebrations are over. Celebrations <laughs> are over now. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Martin. Just a couple of interesting points that he made there, and I think it has to be said as well. Like Kevin Foley would not have been an obvious choice for sweeper. Like I saw him playing under twenty one, and he was like this. He was a sco- he was a score getter, centre like, forward. forward. Like, you remember he hit Offaly for six points in Tullamore one. Wasn't he know? involved in that unbelievable goal yeah, for Cahill Dunbar? Yeah, I don't Dunbar, know. Did he did the flick. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he did yeah, something. Yeah. Anyway. So like, th- like that was a ballsy call to make after two years for Davy, and just on the sweeper system as well. And he kind, Davy kind of said it after in the press conference after like. There was there. I never heard any negativity from inside the camp or anything like that about the way they were playing. Despite mm. they must have been hearing it from everyone, and even Jim Bulger, I think, said it. The, the horse racing trainer after the on, the on another show said it after the Galway game. He said like he was pulling his hair out of the system. Like what is he doing? It's terrible. The people of Wexford are going mad. They don't like it at all. And Davy just totally like believed in what he was doing. And like by all accounts, I I've never seen a group of players from what I've read and chatting to lads, I've never seen a group of players believe in a manager as much as they seem to. So it's totally vindication for Davy and for the players. And it's I, like, and you know, when you get a good manager and you buy into what they're selling, like, it's hard to replace that, like, mm. you know what I mean? It's like, they were beating 13 points by Dublin. Uh, five months before Davy got the job, Dublin annihilated uh, Wexford in, in Croke Park, Park. Yeah. Oh, they annihilated mm. them, with eight of the same starters from the other day and 10, that played at some stage, like so. He he just he turned them from. There's no point saying any different. He turned them from zeros to heroes, like within three years, because they bought into him. And just to to touch on a couple of the Kilkenny players that we haven't really mentioned, there we wax lyrical about Wexford. I just want to mention Hugh Lawler, exceptional performance oh, again. The brilliant. amount of fifty fifty ball he won was incredible. Oh, yeah. um, I th- Paddy Deegan just n- not necessarily that he won the battle with Lee Chin because he didn't, but that so the hop off the <laughs> ground, the reverse hand pass was just a joy to behold. Um, I I don't think Enda Morrissey was the right guy for Rory O'Connor, and I think uh, maybe a change could have been made there at some point. He stayed on him, he hit him for four points in the first half, and while Rory O'Connor didn't maybe get on that much ball in the second half, he still he still was the man in the crucial play yeah. that won the penalty. Wally Walsh doesn't seem like he's right. No, like, he doesn't. No, yeah. he doesn't. No, and Cody kind of said after like we were asking about injuries and stuff like that, and he just said, you know, Wally's had injuries and. He just doesn't look right. He yeah. doesn't look, and the Richie Hogan thing, Shane. Like we have to talk about that. Like if Colin Fenley hadn't got injured trying to kick that goal, Richie Hogan wouldn't have seen any action at all. Hurler the year five years ago, not playing at all. Like mm. now it's bizarre, especially after the goal. I, I don't. I would have brought him on straight away. 
they're going to need you a couple of points. Go for the cool head as much yeah. as anything else, and it's easy to be revisionist and say. You wouldn't have been dropping balls in anyway. I'll tell yeah, you that. You'd, ima you'd imagine that. The other one I wondered is, like, even if Billy Ryan mightn't have had his greatest game the previous day, his pace would that have suited Croke Park, especially if Wally Walsh wasn't right. And he has a hand as well. Yeah. Um, I would also like to point out Adrian Mullen just looks like a superstar. I Some of his scores were absolutely exceptional. I thought he got a hard time as well. Jeez, he had to. He really had <laughs> to be like fouled to win a free. Like, well, what do you? What are your thoughts on that clash ball? So uh, was it Sean Murphy and himself both pulled, but Adrian Mullen more tried to kind of roll him a little bit for the ball to just come back into Adrian. I thought fair enough. Like it's a clash ball. There's going to be hurley swinging. So if you're not going to clash and you end up with the hurley across the face. You kind of brought it on yourself. I have a big issue with that. Like uh, sometimes lads buy freeze by taking a step out and getting yeah. a pull, like which is totally wrong. Like it's a clash ball. Like you're you're supposed to clash. You're not supposed to walk out to it yeah. technically. So while it was like he got an, he got an awful doing, it was bad now. Yeah. But like it was legitimate in, in my view, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. The cl I I don't know about the clash ball in some ways. I wonder is there another way because. It's a very easy way for people to get broken fingers because you pull and that hurley can slide up the hand and just absolutely smash and it's, your thumb. It, I suppose it's even more common now that that's happening because it's it's rarity like that lads are actually pulling against each other. Like when do you see lads actually pulling against yeah. each other apart from throwings? Like so, yeah, but it can happen and it just kind of flies up the hurl and you're in bits of either a thumb or a finger, be nearly falling off mm. after it. Yeah, we'll get uh, Ollie Moore in here on in a second, uh, but. Just to touch briefly, now we're going to talk about how Mays and Limerick were, and we'll do that with uh, with Ollie. But Tipperary, what were your initial thoughts on Tipperary two twenty six to two fourteen? Yeah, the initial thoughts is you probably shift back to you shift back to two weeks ago and look at who learned more about whose game plan and who was able to put plans in place based on what they saw the the two weeks previous. I, like Tipperary couldn't have planned for what for what Limerick brought. Limerick definitely planned. And knew what Tipperary were going to bring. Mm. We talked about like Park Walsh being kept out of the game, like Park Mara was a non-entity, and that was that was by choice with the way Limerick played basically as well. Like they just mm. didn't, they just didn't let him, they just didn't put ball in around that area where he could sweep. Made him very uncomfortable. Tried to pull him out as well. Every time he got the ball, he was under more pressure as well. Um, and they weren't allowing him. When we talked about him kind of buying freeze. They weren't allowing him any time he got the ball to, you know, do any of that as well, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. it was very, very smart. They, they just seemed to learn all the lessons as well, as well as that Barrett not starting, like, Brendan Maher was brilliant, but that robbed the half-back line, and it just, it had an effect nearly on kind of every line almost as well. What are the issues that I've been saying for about two and a half years that Tipperary have, um, if you were to sum them up? Striking long ball into the forward line. That was one of them, and actually there's, there's another reason why that didn't work in this game. But I've been talking about midfield, and I've been talking about full-back, have I not? Yeah, ah, yeah to be fair, yeah. So, when you bring Brendan Maher back to mark the one big guy that's in the full forward line, which is Aaron Galan, the other two guys are Peter Casey and Graham Mulcahy, who are both very small, fast, nippy players. Do you want someone six foot one who's not the quickest turner on them? No, of course, no. of course he's not. Do you want them so, mobile, small and mobile? So player. for me, like James Barry was given a very, very hard task, especially um, against a team that completely won the battle for the ball in the middle of the field. So he's going to be up against it. His confidence is low as well, and you can see that when he's on the ball. And because uh, Dan McCormick, who started wing forward, was dropping out to midfield more or less, and Tip had a two-man inside line and a three-man half forward line of Jason Ford, Bubbles, and Seamus Callan. How many long puckouts are Tip going to win? Probably not too many. Six, and then, six out of 31. Yeah. And then Limerick are pushing up on you, but they're letting the option of James Barry and Sean O'Brien to take the ball an awful lot. Uh, in fact, it's not just that they're tempting you, they actually want you to yeah. do it. And these two lads aren't comfortable bringing the ball out as well. So I think they were given really tough tasks. We so. talked about the way Limerick played. Like Limerick let let Tui and, and Hambry have the ball in the Arnold final as well and they let them boys have it the other day too but the James Barry thing was like Limerick totally that was totally by design they totally they knew that someone was going to pick up Galan and it wasn't going to be Barry they knew that, Barry, that, that by putting Galan in full forward most of the time mm. that Barry was going to be cornerback where he didn't want to play and you have to go horses for courses so I thought it was it was what what an amazing oversight to not play, for example, Alan Flynn cornerback. More of a like for like matchup on Peter Casey. Didn't get any time. Yeah, he didn't get any time major. at all. Yeah. yeah, but like I'd seen Peter Casey up close as well with the piercing and all that. And on a bigger man, he will go to town. Um, the other thing was midfield as well. I like Michael Breen is really good in a certain scenario at midfield, but in a game, really tight game, that Tipperary are not on top. 
and you look back to the last number of years, 2016, he was an All-Star nominee until the All-Ireland semi-final against, sorry, was that 15 or 16, against Galway and, you know, out of the game altogether. And it's just that thing, it just doesn't seem to be happening for him in those games. Obviously, I've talked about him as a full-back option as well, but those were two big things. And if that puck out isn't working, right, your whole game crumbles all around it because you don't know whether it hit it long or short, neither are working. If you have a puck out plan that works, then all of a sudden you have options. So Limerick were far superior in a million different ways. It was strange as well. That puts you out of the game. Yeah, Noel McGrath as well. Noel McGrath actually got on a decent amount of ball, particularly for 15 or 20 minutes of the second half before he went off. But it's almost like the cornerbacks and Limerick full back line is so good that they knew when McGrath got the ball that it was probably going to be a long ball Mm. And invariably, those long balls in, they weren't bad balls in, but just the backs were totally reading it every time. Oh, they were reading their yeah. man alive. Yeah, like it's mad. Like, and that's, I don't think that's Noel McGrath's fault. I, mean, I thought it was strange for him to be taken off as well. If they were going to make something happen, he was one of the ones more likely to do it. But I just thought that was interesting. That was an, yeah, another thing that they learned. We kind of pinpointed McGrath the last day, and they just, he did have, he did have a decent bit of ball, mm. but he couldn't be effective with the ball because. The cornerbacks knew what, knew what he was going to do and where he was going to put. We said we'd have Ollie Moore on the line. I think Ollie's on the line there now. How are you doing, Ollie? How are you, Shane? How are things? Bad. Michael? It's been a tough Ollie, week you? now after, after what she did to, to Tipperary as well. A lot of people have talked about the context of what happened 10 years ago when Tip won the All-Ireland semi-final against uh, Limerick 6-19 to 2-7. You came on at half-time that day. So this hammering has been 10 years in the making, has it not? <laughs> <laughs> That's really deep the archives there, Shane. Um, <laughs> I doubt now that was foremost on, on, on Limerick's minds now or tip minds for that matter last Sunday. But uh, look, certainly not. Look, it's like everything. Um, teams evolve and championships evolve. And uh, look, this team has, uh, you know, Limerick have been aware that this team has been coming for the last number of years. And I suppose, look, to be fair, I think last Sunday was nearly like a, uh, a crowning moment. Like, And look, tip very has always been the barometer we've, said ourselves anything we ever played more often than not we came out on the wrong side of it Like, but, but you know Tipper all was the yardstick uh, for us as they showed look, people have have short memories too like it was only a matter of weeks ago that, that you know Tipper might have been reflecting the scoreline but I felt Tipper were utterly dominant uh, against Limerick in, in Turles albeit in, in uh, the league aspect of it like so look like everything I think you're being very harsh uh, in a lot of ways on Tipperary and maybe you're, you're, you're over analysing it uh, in one sense, I think even from talking to Tipperary people this week, there's a lot of kind of post mortems going on. Like, and look, I think people forget that that Tipperary were still in the game um, on the scoreboard uh, with with 15, 20 minutes to go. And okay, Limerick certainly overran. I think Tip went 20 odd minutes without scoring, which which obviously tells its own story. Like, but but I think look, um, maybe Limerick's physicality. Uh, I think their their conditioning definitely kicked in they definitely looked like they're the hungrier team and from my point of view I felt they'd learned an awful lot from uh, the previous game in Thurles where, where I felt you know Tip did a number on us but I think John Kiley probably came out that day having learned an awful lot and um, you know maybe at, at at the risk of, of, of maybe being a bit critical on, on Liam uh, maybe Tip didn't learn so much you know what I mean so, so look it's like it's one of those days our Tip uh, 12 points Worse than Limerick, certainly not. Um, but look, I do think Limerick are are certainly uh, ahead of them in physical terms. And look, the age profile, I think, is a massive uh, factor too. I think you know we've young players um, who are probably coming into are starting to come into their prime now. And uh, look, the squad factor, I'm sure you've alluded to that as well. So like, look, they're all elements. It's probably in our favour at the moment. But look, I'd be very naive to think now Limerick are going to stay on top forever like it comes in cycles and maybe this is Limerick cycle Ali you, you've worked in Tipperary Club Hurling before with uh, my hometown Burris Lee as well for a couple of years so you, you probably know what we're like down there as well but <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're live on air oh, don't, don't, don't say what you really think but the, the point I was going to make is that you know, you suggested maybe being a bit harsh in the analysis and maybe even over-analyzing, but there was twi- uh, almost 20 minutes in the second half where Nicky Quaid didn't even have to hit a pucker. Yeah. So I'm wondering how do you even make a case? Where are the positives for Tipperary here? Not that you'd necessarily want to, to espouse them. Yeah, but, but look, I suppose I haven't had maybe time to, to, to uh, analyze it through uh, tip perspective. Look, it was clear that, um, like again, you know, I'm probably only giving my take on it maybe from a, from a you know, through a tip lens, like what... Look, uh, 
you know, where the last day all their big players turned up, I think certainly last Sunday, Limerick won all those key battles. Like, no, you're looking for, um, uh, you know, bubbles to ask questions, Noel McGrath, like Shamey, to be fair, I felt he got, he got, um, you know, relatively little supply, uh, the half back line. Like, you know, Parik Mar for me was a massive factor in Thurles two weeks ago. I think Limerick clearly had their homework done then. They completely uh, negated him. So, you know, like, I wouldn't go along with the notion that, look, look maybe I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at his glass half full from a, maybe through a tip lens. But, like, look, it's like one of those days. No more than that t- 10 years ago, you know, when a team gets a run and you like that, I just think uh, they were after taking so many punches um, up to the last quarter of the game that you know when the game was still in the melting pot I think they were physically and, and mentally spent um, and you know the floodgates just opened for Limerick like but look uh, I think from a positive I think it's been the, or from a negative point of view okay it's been the lowest score that that's, uh, Tip have um, have racked up like a lot of the players I suppose that, that, that you know were in form or that promised uh, a lot probably delivered very little like so so look, I'm not so sure I know you mentioned there about about puck outs uh, you know Shkreri's puck outs have been a have been an issue you know it's not it's not uh, today or yesterday that was a problem like that's that that's been a a consistent problem for Tip and that they don't have any out and out kind of um, ball winner as such like okay Bonner was a huge loss but like Bonner wouldn't be again he's not he's not a natural ball winner for maybe primary possession he's certainly uh, probably one of the top players out there in terms of winning the dirty ball um, so like I think when when you took that out and look Limerick have a huge half back line they you know it's it, it's well known how they load their their middle area like so you know so so Tip I think have to find a way going forward of of you know getting getting over that obstacle uh, either against Limerick or teams down the line because now you're you know they're still in a in an All Ireland quarter final there's no reason why Tip aren't going to be in an All Ireland final and I think they're the they're the key areas that okay we all know the quality they have up front like but you know you have to give them a platform out the field um, to deliver good primary ball into their uh, or sorry good quality ball into their full forward line and I think they were they're starved of that for a large portion of it um, I think I saw a stat there during the week you know about the amount of scorable opportunities that Limerick created inside the scoring zone compared to what Tip was like I'm sure you know it tells its own story like as regards you know if you're not getting the ball into that area quick enough um, well then you have a problem and I think ultimately that's where maybe Tip uh Tip left like and Limerick just won that middle third area like you know the, our half forward line, our midfield and our half half back line utterly dominated. You know what I mean? Mm. So so like that that lays on the plate then for for Peter Casey and for uh, Graham O'Kahey. But like and I know you mentioned uh, like but look uh, uh, kudos to Brendan Marr. Like I just felt he was phenomenal on a and and Brian Hogan. I think uh, they were phenomenal from a temporary point of view. Um, like especially Brendan Maher, like because I'd have Brendan Maher five every day of the week. I think he's 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 top five in the co- he's number five in the country on his game. And to ask him to completely sacrifice his own game, like he's done before with Tip at half forward midfield in all the positions. Like, but to ask him to go in corner back or full back and do a man marking job on Aaron Galan and do the quality job that he did, you know, it speaks volumes for himself for a guy who was out last year with a crucial injury. You know what I mean? It's mm. it's uh, it's a phenomenal turnaround. But look, I don't think it's all all doom and gloom maybe either. You know, maybe I'm 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 putting a glass on it. It's very coming out me, I think, Shane. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and also I think there like it's night and day, like that victory that Tip had over Limerick a couple of weeks ago, there was four of the main players who were all brilliant. It, it just showed the difference when Limerick put the race side out that Tip were in trouble. But can I yeah. can I run a, a Shane Dowling quote uh, by you from the other day? He goes, When I started my my own career I couldn't believe not the criticism as I went on I realised the people of Limerick crave success so much that's all it is people of Limerick are proud people for us to be able to do that on a continuous basis now over the last two years even if we don't go and win the All-Ireland we haven't been one hit, one hit wonders we've backed it up what, what, what do you take from, from a sentence like that? Well, come here. I think he's like, an, and the thing people love about Shane Dowling is he says it as it is. Like he's not, he's not kind of uh, blown up um, this Limerick team. He's just, he's just stating fact. Like if Limerick were poor, I think he'd equally come and tell you straight out Limerick were poor. Look, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Like, and, and I think you ask any Limerick player. Like, I've no uh, recollection of Limerick teams maybe in the in the late seventies or early eighties. Like, my recollection started from maybe. 
kind of mid eighties, like when Limerick teams would have won leagues and would have been always very competitive. Like, but in my lifetime, you know, I've never, I've never seen uh, a Limerick team as complete in every sense of the word. Like, and that's look, maybe they will be beaten. Like they've already been beaten twice this year. Like, but, 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 like on farm, on the farm they showed last Sunday, and on the farm of the last, I would say, um, the last two years, uh, or months, like. Those golden generation of Limerick hurlers, I think uh, we have probably an awful lot of things in our favour. We have just a glut of of talent coming through at the moment that that we've never had. Like we're absolutely spoiled at the moment. And that you know, you mentioned the likes of Shane Dowling, uh, you know, Pat Ryan, Darrow Donovan. All these guys are all quality players that have been restricted to cameo uh, appearances this year. Like so, you know, to be in a position where you can afford to leave the likes of those players. Out, um, you know, Seamus Flanagan as well. Uh, not to mention, you know, Barry Nash came on the last day and, and was excellent in, in the few minutes he played. So, like, you know, we have guys that are chomping at the bit. Like, I suppose we always would have looked up to the maybe the, the Kilkenny model as being the absolute ultimate hurling model in that they had strength and depth, a very, very competitive environment, very good people over them. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, I think they're, they're, they've set the template really for everyone as regards. Um, dominating in the game of hurling, like well, I think, look, call it spade a spade. Like this Limerick team is is certainly if they don't win all Ireland, it'll be it'll be because um, it just hasn't happened for them on a particular day. Like and as I said, they have been caught caught out before. Like but it is like I think I think as a supporter, they're a joy to watch. I think you know they they give such joy and satisfaction to everyone who goes and, and watches them. I think they're they're great ambassadors for the game too. I think how they conduct themselves. You know, there's there's not a bad stroke, and any of them they play the game physically. You know, they take it and give it physically, um, and I just think they're playing a brand of hurling that that uh, is a joy to watch. I suppose, look, if you were to if you were to look at a at a fault at times, maybe, and, and again, this is more a personal bugbear than anything else. I just feel maybe that that when we have been beaten this year, um, that that very short tight game that we tend to play in the middle third uh, has has uh, has come unstuck a few times particularly against uh, Tip and Thurless. Um and even in the Cork game I felt maybe that 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 we overplayed the ball unnecessarily when when you know what I mean when uh, when a longer option would certainly have been a, uh, a better option like but look that's 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 um that's nitpicking like but I suppose look you've got to understand as well that there isn't a dominant team in the same way as there was like the Kilkenny teams the last 10 or 15 years were so utterly dominant that, that they were on the horizon no matter where you went like so so now I suppose the level or the playing field is, is an awful lot more level as well like so there is huge opportunity there for uh, for Limerick really to, to try if they can keep that hunger going for the next number of look if they can keep it going until August and get not Ireland this year again it'll be it'll be phen- phenomenal like uh, I mean, um, I don't think Limerick have ever won uh, All Ireland back to back, to the best of my knowledge. But um, so, like, look from that point of view, they're in a great position. They're in All Ireland semi final. I don't think they're going to be impacted by hype. They've been there before. They've gotten beaten, so they've gotten their lessons already this year. So I think, look, it's set up for them. They're in a great position. But it's a case of just keeping it going out for the rest of the year. Just one final question, then, before we let you go, Ali. Uh, Keen, for, Keen McGrath from Limerick has sent in a question. How much would you enjoy playing as a Limerick half forward nowadays? Oh, sure. Look, be in your element. Like, uh, look, uh, I'll be honest. I, you'd be, you'd be uh, privately, you'd be very jealous of. Uh, of the team at the moment because like they're they're look I think the thing that that I love about them they're given such license um, like I know uh, Dan and Garod especially or sorry Tom Morrissey and, and Garod uh, and I know that there would have been question marks maybe about them in the last number of years or whatever but like they've uh, I think what I love about them is like they're they're both phenomenal hurlers but like they've they've given they've been given this license to go deep to go rummage and they're almost like kind of open side flankers in, in the rugby sense in that they're they're at every breakdown they're they're setting up plays at the moment um, they're both very good ball winners as well like they can win their own ball but they're they're both like you know the cherry on top for these guys is that they can they can finish very well so look of course you'd be envious of that, like that's exactly the role you'd, you'd love to have had. But like, look, they're they're just in a very competitive environment. Like they're both great competitors. You know, all that Limerick team are great competitors as well. So like, of course, you'd love to be in that environment. I'm not saying we weren't. Like, I think we just probably didn't have the depth of talent 
um, and the physicality, I suppose, that that Limerick team at the moment have. Like, but they're they're a joy to play. You know, they're a joy to watch, and I'm sure they're a joy to to play with. And I'm sure you know they get it themselves. How privileged and how lucky they are to be in that environment at the moment. But uh, look, we had our every every dog has its day, and we had our day. And look. These boys are making the most of, of the days they have at the moment anyway, Shane. Well, I'd say all you have to do now is wait for the All-Ireland pick up the cup and that'll be the season done. I wish it was that easy, <laughs> Shane. You and I both know it doesn't work like that. So so, so maybe I'm setting myself up for a fall or maybe you're setting me up for a fall. I'm trying to, I think so, yeah. I'm just uh, saying it as it is anyway. Looking at the moment, they're in a great position. But uh, don't you know, there's, you know, there's always someone waiting for you in the long grass and I think even the boys... Down south, whether it would be Wexford now or Cork, I think especially they're 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 probably licking their lips now as well, you know. You've been great with your time, Ollie. Thanks very much for joining us. All right, thanks, Shane. All Take the best. Care. One thing that stood out actually from the game as well was Limerick's responses to the Tipperary goals. So the first, Will O'Callaghan's after joining us as well, by the way. How are you doing, Will? Um, Limerick's responses to the goals: seven points, seven of the next ten points after the first goal, thirteen of the next fifteen from the second goal as well. Will, what did you make of it? Yeah, look, they obviously they took a couple of blows there with the goals, but straight away they were able to turn things around. I mean, Limerick were. I thought really, really impressive uh, pretty much from start to finish during the game. We were talking about last week and I think aside from you who said that Tipperary were going to get blown away, which I'm sure was trying to put a jinx on them, and myself and Michael were probably expecting the game to be even a little bit closer than it was. Probably, I was listening to the game, John Milan's commentary was probably more entertaining than the game itself. But um, at the same time, Limerick were back to doing everything that they do really well. Uh, they moved the ball around very cleverly, uh, they took the scores and again, they just seem to have a bit of driving games when they need them. Remember we were talking about this about the Kilkenny game earlier in the year that when it felt like the game was going tight they were able to just blow them away either side of half time similarly when Tipperary every time that they seemed to get close uh, Limerick if it was a boxing match it's almost like they just knew they had enough and they were able to turn on the power when they needed very very impressive indeed. The bright spots for Tipperary aren't, aren't too many. I think Jerome Cahill came on did well. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a start the next day because uh, you know why not so many other players underperform massively as well I, think I wouldn't be I wouldn't be, I I wouldn't wouldn't be to, No you can't ignore 220 to 214 like that that requires a bit of surgery a bit more thought it, it does require of a bit of, for it courses. does require a bit of surgery but I don't it's not radical surgery it's not like five lads coming in or anything like that well no I'm not saying it has five lads yeah. but you have to pick more horses for courses and not allow mismatches to happen and hopefully Niall O'Mara gets a bit more training in him as well because he started the season well still think he'll get back to an honour final might do because I, think yeah, I mean we're, we're going to talk about Leash in a second who'll face Dublin the winner of that will play Tipperary and then the winner of that will play Wexford so from Tipperary's point of view if they play at any of those teams in a one-off game Tip would probably be favourites so the, the chances are there for Tipperary to do that Just on Dowling's quote I thought it was very interesting number one he is definitely the most quoted substitute in the history of sport <laughs> yeah. I would say uh, number two it's very smart as well like it's saying we've success already it's not saying we have to win the All-Ireland you know what I mean it's Well they've very, done more than clear yeah. they've done like they've uh, backed it up by actually winning something else and they've backed it up they've won the two the two titles big titles that they've played for they're not, and played three. really well yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and, really play, and played really really well so, <laughs> actually um, Shane Dowling as well kind of made some reference to you know I'm at the tail end of my career or winning titles at the tail, tail end of my career he's 26 26 26 scary, isn't it? stop it's trying to sell us a pub Shane we'll be around <laughs> for a few more years yeah. can we talk about Leash Fantastic performance. Uh, yeah. uh, was it the final score was three twenty six to one twenty one as well? Um, I watched the game back the other day. Really, really fantastic performance. And Eddie Brennan has them up to the Leinster Championship after just one season. Fantastic. Yeah, I was watching the game on Sunday afternoon. It was unfortunate, obviously, that it coincided with the Munster final. So mm. I was listening to the Munster final while watching uh, Leash against uh, Westmead. And Leash kind of did everything we expected last week. They had a really good share of scores, including it's very nice to be able to bring Stephen Bergen on for ninety seconds. And he managed to get a goal while he's on the pitch. He just uh, found himself in a really good position when he was on as a blood sub for Mark Cavanagh. Kind of drifted away, finished the ball very nicely. The Aaron Dunphy goal was incredible. Yeah. Definitely a contender for goal this season. Mm. A very clever little one-two with Paddy Purcell. And then when he took that ball on, it was almost like he had laser vision as to where he wanted to go. He went straight through the middle of that Westmead defence and uh, popped it into the top corner from 30 metres out. And they just had a better share of scores during the day. Like the first half was pretty much a shootout between the two respective 11s, Killian Doyle and Mark Cavanagh. Interestingly, Mark Cavanagh, I think, scored five points from play yeah. uh, either side of half time and all of his scores have been coming from freeze earlier in the year so yeah. made a huge game for them uh, but again Westmead were just so reliant on uh, Killian Doyle throughout the game to get their scores and I think he took a lot of shots under pressure when he felt that he had to do the scoring himself as well and Westmead were clutching at it in the second half and a bit like the Limerick Tipperary game you know once Leash got themselves a bit of a lead you felt that Westmead unless they scored two or three goals were in serious pressure in that uh, game and like think of the really good runners that Leash have in that team Paddy Purcell is one so Paddy, pa- Paddy Purcell could run the Olympics 
Olympics boys or something, 800 meters or something. <laughs> boys, he's phenomenal. I, I reckon he's the, the, the prototype, he's perfect. He'd be on, make any team in Ireland. We I'm need a hot take that. graphic up on Michael No, Barry's I'm convinced of it. Right now. But like Mark Cavanagh, Aaron Dunphy as well, like Chad Ware, lovely hurler, Ross King, so good that they got, got him back into the panel as I'm well. Got him into a new position this year as well, Shane. Like we were kind of wondering whether he would go back into the midfield role that he was playing under Eamon Kelly and even towards the end of Cheddar's reign. And now they seem to have found a position from back in the forward line. And like, if you look at the scores that they've racked up during the Joe McDonough Cup, it's not going to count mm. for much this Saturday coming up against the Lee McCarthy team. But still, at that level, they've blown teams away with the scores that they've got. And Roddy King has just added a little bit of extra firepower as well. What's the big thing as well, though, with teams coming up? It's saying, oh, Marty Kavanagh, we're, Ricardo are over reliant on him, we'll say. And you're over, you don't maybe have two or three big forwards. Leash have four or five forwards that can put up big scores. Will they get blown away by Dublin's physicality, though? They did meet in the league and it was 113 to 111 on a horrendous day so it's I was talking to Niall Corkin the Kilmacud player former Dublin player who's coach of Leash now so he's coaching yeah. he's coaching Leash against some of his own club well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, <peace be> <laughs> yeah. but um, <laughs> other than that they played in as far as I know there was a challenge match between the teams um, not so long ago as well and Dublin got a few goals in that and won it quite uh, and Dublin quite have had kind of the number over Leash over the last few years as well they've met in a couple of qualifiers and Dublin have been reasonably comfortable I think it's a huge ask for Leash particularly yeah. on the back of a week after you know and it's not even that they will have celebrated all that strongly because as far as I know Leash kind of had their one night on Sunday they brought the cup back to the Midland Park Hotel enjoyed that and then they were doing the school visits and the club visits on Monday and Tuesday and like that's really important to do as well Massive. but it means that your focus wasn't back on probably to the middle of the week and I know Eddie Brennan was on with the OTBM guys the other day and he was saying look we can't crib about the fact that it's a week of a break but Dublin have had three or four weeks they've had the fact that they could yeah. go with their scouts last weekend watch us in the Joe McDonough Cup final can they get it some up? injured players back you know Owen O'Donnell came off in that game the likes of uh, Paul Ryan David Tracy they weren't togged out the last day as well as Keno Callan, right I don't know even though he's my club mate sure he wouldn't tell me uh, the motivation as well for Leash the bookies have odds up of uh, yes, Tipperary against Dublin yeah. as well that's staying a bit very interested to see Matthew Whelan has been full back big man is Oshin O'Rourke going to go in on him as well I think that's the sort of a matchup that we could see as well uh, Matty Kenny be looking for that sort say of thing say they try a horses for courses there as well they could, wouldn't be Leash. surprised yeah, if he ended up in the half back line even or something yeah. like that they won't I don't think they'd allow that because that is as big a mismatch yeah, I, I don't think they will either but like that's the sort of thing how do Leash adjust to that who who would they uh, like mine in the square if they also had a matchup that suits I think um, they have changed around in defence for the Westmead game like it was we're talking about that last week it was interesting match you ended up going back to full back for the final mm. so I think Eddie Brennan probably sees Whelan as his option long term but you know, so far, Eddie Brennan hasn't been afraid to switch things around. Cool. The Niall Corkin thing is really interesting as well because I was chatting him and he was just saying, yeah, I know a lot about them, but it's one thing knowing a lot about them and, and I know what they're all good at, but it's another thing trying to stop, <laughs> stop them doing what they're good at, you know? And like for Westmead, it's going to be very hard to turn it around in the space of the week because it's the second uh, Joe McDonough final defeat in a row. Last year was under Michael Ryan, this year under Joe Quaid as well. Played fairly well overall throughout the Joe McDonough, but probably a couple of blips in there as well. A deflating uh, loss, though, like yeah, his big loss. Was it 11 points? You know, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, fair, it's a fair loss. Like. And to play against Cork now, albeit at home as well, that's a big ask. They're not the team you want to be playing. No, <laughs> especially in their rested as yeah. well. Westmead have had a couple of decent performances against big teams over the years. I mean, Wexford last year did okay, tipped the year before, had them under pressure for a long time. Well, in spells against Limerick a few years ago. Limerick as well, as well so... Do you, I mean, we can't really massively build a case for Westmead winning this game all the same, can we? No, can't not say. to win anyway. I, I think, look, Westmead could give them you know, a decent enough game for spells and that, but Cork have just got way too much, I think, and they've been operating at far too high a level for Westmead to try and catch up. And like it, As Michael said, like it's very deflating for Westmead given that they went out of that game, the Joe McDonough Cup final, and were probably finished with about 15 minutes to go, and that's yeah. when Lee started tacking on some extra scores. Mm. So I think it's a big ask for Westmead, although it's unfortunate for them because they've lost only two matches in the entire year and they've won two pieces of silverware. Mm. It's still a very progressive year for Definitely, them. They go up to Division 1 for the first time in 30 years next year. I think that'll kick Westmead onto the next level. But don't well, see them doing Don't think they have the forwards to trouble Cork. Yeah. Cork's Achilles heels is the backs. And we'll rush through a couple of comments here. Um, so, quick fire answers. Who will the Offaly lads be supporting for the rest of the championship? <laughs> Wexford. <laughs> Definitely not tip, anyway. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> uh, can Leash give the dubs a serious challenge? As a Camaros man who played hurling for over 40 years, I think we could give them a fair go, says Mikey and Abby Leakes. Michael and Abby Leakes. I think they can, yeah. Can give them a fair go, right? Yeah, I, 
I don't think so, especially if Dublin have a couple of injuries back. Tip like Limerick did after the game in Thurles will learn a lot. The loss of Bonner is huge, but if we meet Limerick again, surely the players will be more confident on the ball and uh, match, if not better, Limerick's intensity. That's Colm and Drum. Barrett be back as well. Wouldn't be so sure about all of that. Uh, how big a factor was Bonner's loss? Podge in Newport, fairly uh, strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Joe Murray with a serious hot take. Don't think Tip were that pushed about winning on Sunday. Oh, interesting. Uh, don't really believe that one. We've got about two and a half minutes left, lads. So uh, Keen Lynch posted a picture of his the four ball from <laughs> the other Lynch day. Keen Lynch, who reacted unbelievably well to being dropped. The, the, yeah. the fed <laughs> well, you just wished that. about that. You've done <laughs> like dig up. He was phenomenal yeah. the other day. So let's look at the uh, the, the four ball. He was at the um, he was playing golf down in um, Lynch. In, Lynch, in, yeah. in Lynch yeah, the other day. So it was Keen Lynch, Shane Lowry. Joe Canning and Shane O'Donnell. Not a bad four ball now, lads. <laughs> yeah. Joe's left handed as well. I know. Golf's left handed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Puts right handed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, actually, did you ever see a couple of the snooker players? This is especially the lefties. I think we've talked about before. Uh, might be the likes of Judd Trump, and there's someone else. Mark as Allen, well. I think, as well. Yeah, so they're lefties when they're playing uh, normally, mm. but then when they've got the rest out, they actually play with it a bit like. He looks like a throw a dart. <laughs> I've seen him play snooker. <laughs> no, no, no. He is as poor as his technique <laughs> suggests. <laughs> All right, who's your four ball? Who's your dream GA four ball? I've taken mine is from the most uh, kind of outlandish Twitter characters, GA Twitter characters. So number one is uh, Eamon Dillon, trollier, who's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, number yeah. two is Alan Murphy from Kilkenny. If you don't follow him, you really should. <laughs> and number three is uh, Jamie Wall. The three, they're my three best. Not a bad little group. Mm. Uh, did you have time to think no, of a group? No time to yeah, think of a group. Yeah, we've kind of put you on the spot. for next week. Okay, so mine would have to be uh, Babs Keaton. You know, <laughs> <laughs> especially when you think of like the amount of speeches he said beforehand where he said, lads, look, I was out in the golf course this morning and... <laughs> Straight in from 10 feet. <laughs> so I thought he'd be an ideal man. Kieran Carey, can you imagine the chat and the sayings coming out of him? Yeah. And F and Eddie. F and Eddie oh, Maroney yeah. as well. Uh, the whole way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I just took a selection of a few of his quotes. My false teeth are coming out. I can't keep them in. Ref for Jesus' sake, that's an effing penalty. The be loads of stars after that. <laughs> he must have no wipers in his glasses. So I think that'd be an entertaining enough crew. That's have we it all said? I think we have. This week, anyway. We have, we have indeed. All right, that's it from the Hurling Show this week. We'll be back again at high noon next Thursday. Um, you can, you can, uh, there'll be lots of coverage on Off the Ball all weekend, so uh, capture that. We'll chat to you next week. The Hurling Show from Off the Ball. The Capri Flake McFlurry is here at McDonald's. So break out your short shorts because summer has officially begun. Soft dairy ice cream swirled with Capri flake chocolate pieces and delicious chocolatey or raspberry sauce. Available until the 6th of August. OTB Sports Radio with BruceBetting.com. Download our top rated.